from God's house to your house. So go grab your Bible, notebook, and pen and get ready for a word from God. God is faithful. He is true. So God, we're here to worship you. It's all about you. We acknowledge your presence. We're in awe of your mercy and grace. Come on, elevate it all together. The weapon may be formed, but it won't prosper. When the darkness falls, it won't breathe in. Here's why. Cause the God I serve knows only how to triumph. Woo! My God will never fail. Say, oh my God will never fail. All together, I'm gonna see a victory. I'm gonna see a victory.
everybody and welcome to Space Ninjas vs Pirate Squirrels. Are you ready for the biggest, baddest battle of the galaxy ever now? I don't think you are. Nah. For the next four weeks, we're gonna have a battle. Let me phrase that. A Bible battle between the Space Ninjas and the Pirate Squirrels. It will be tons of fun, but more than that, it's gonna help us dive deeper into the big Bible story to see how God has cared for us and his people even when they were forced out of the promised land. Before we get started though, let me explain how the battle is going to work. On this side, we have the Space Ninjas. If your team is the Space Ninjas, comment below, Team Space Ninjas. And on this side, we have the Pirate Squirrels. If your team is that, then comment down below, Team Pirate Squirrels. The object of the competition is to be the team with the most points at the end of each lesson. Each time a team member comments below, your team will receive five points. That's right, five points. Your team will collect points throughout each lesson. Remember kids, there's only one way to collect points. Your team can collect points. Everyone say there's only one way your team can collect points. Teams can collect points by participating. You got it. Comment below either Facebook or on YouTube. At the end of each lesson, we'll count out the points. Whichever team has the most will win Sir Willy Wonka's Stinky Shoe. The winning team will be announced on Facebook and Instagram on Monday for everyone to know which team is in the lead. Kids, remember to ask an adult for help when commenting. of Jerusalem, the people of Judah were taken as captives to the enemy land of Babylon and forced to work for King Nebuchadnezzar. Thanks to their friend Daniel though, King Nebuchadnezzar chose three captives to choose serve as important government officials. Their names were Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. I'll give points to the first team that post a heart shape with their hands, draw a heart, or find an object that's a heart in their home and comment below. Even though they had been forced to leave the land, the promised land to be exact, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego still loved and followed God with all their heart. All right, Gabby, we're gonna give five points to the first team that can post something gold colored. They can either draw it, take a picture of it, or even find the object that's gold colored and post it in the comments below. So one day, King, ne King Nebuchadnezzar made a giant gold statue that stood 90 feet tall and 9 feet wide. Then he called all of his government officials to attend a special gathering to honor the statue. But during the gathering, a messenger of the king announced a new rule. Hear ye, hear ye. The king has decreed that beginning immediately... Whenever the royal musicians play their instruments, you must drop to your knees and worship the gold statue. Those refusing to do so will be thrown into a blazing hot furnace. As soon as the messenger had finished reading the new rule, the royal musicians blew their trumpets and flutes. I'll give points to the team who can, who can comment below a drawing of a trumpet, make the best trumpet sound, or a picture of an imaginary trumpet. All right, so immediately all of the people dropped to their knees and began worshiping the gold statue. All the people that is, except for Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. They knew that the one true God was the only one worthy of worship and they refused to kneel before a silly statue that when is. When King Neb heard that the three men of Judah had refused to worship his statue, he was furious. I'll give points to the team that post their most furious looks. Remember, post your most furious looks in the comments below. All right. The king had Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego brought to him, and he told them they had one more chance to kneel down and worship the statue. Let's see how they responded to the king. I'll give a point to the team that can open their Bible first and find Daniel 3.16 and comment below. If you found Daniel 3.16 through 18, read it aloud with an adult. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego replied to him. They said, King Nebuchadnezzar, we don't need to talk about this anymore. We might be thrown into the blazing furnace, but the God we serve 
is able to bring us out of it alive. He will save us from your power. But we want you to know this, your majesty. Even if we knew our God wouldn't save us, we still wouldn't serve your gods. We wouldn't worship your golden statue you've set up. Now, the king was really furious. And the king's temper rose, and so did the temperature in the furnace. King Nebuchadnezzar ordered that the furnace be heated seven times hotter than usual. I'll give a point to the first team that can post a shoelace apart from the shoe in the comments below. After heating the furnace, the king's strongest soldiers tied up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego with ropes and threw them into the blazing furnace. The furnace was so hot that the flames killed the soldiers who threw the three friends into it. But the king saw something strange in the furnace. He leaped to his feet and he said, didn't we throw three men into the fire? Look, I see four men walking around in there. They're not even burned up, and the fourth man looks like a son of the gods. Ooh. The king approached the furnace and called for Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego to come out. When the three friends emerged from the fire, not only were they alive, not one hair on their heads was burned. They didn't even smell like smoke. King Nebuchadnezzar couldn't believe it. He said, from now on, there is a new rule. No one can say a word against the one and true God, and if they do, they'll be cut to pieces. Then they honored Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and by giving them even higher positions in the city of Babylon. Now that you've heard the story, I think it's time to see how well you were listening. Are you ready for the big review battle? How tall was King Neb's gold statue? A, nine feet, B, 90 feet, C, 900 feet, or D, 9,000 feet? When the royal musicians play their music, what were the people ordered to do? A, lay money at the feet of the statue, B, dance before the statue, C, drop down and worship the statue, or D, all of the above. When Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego refused the King Neb's orders, how many times hotter did he have the fire made? A, four times, B, five times, C, six times, or D, seven times? When the three friends came out to the furnace, what did the king notice about them? A, they were alive. B, not a single hair had been burned. C, they didn't smell like smoke. Or D, all the above. I've heard of people standing up for God, but Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego actually stood up for God. Even though they were threatened with death, the three friends from Judah kept on standing. They refused to bow down and worship the gold statue. Fortunately for us, we don't get thrown into a fiery furnace for worshiping the one true God. But loving and following Jesus isn't always a popular thing to do. Sometimes people say that believing in God is weird. I mean, some people also say that living life God's way is dumb and boring. I don't think so. Sometimes people try to get us to do things that break God's rules. When people say or do those things, we have a choice to make like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego did. We can either stay quiet or we can stand up for God like they did. Hey kids, have you ever had a situation where you had to stand up for your faith or for God? If so, comment down below. We'd love to hear from you. Even though we're not threatened with death like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego standing up for God, can be hard. It feels like we're all alone, but we're not. In our story for today, King Nebuchadnezzar had three people thrown into the furnace, but how many people did he see walking around the fire? That's right, four. King Nebuchadnezzar said that the fourth man looked like the son of the gods. Some people think it was an angel. Other people think that it was Jesus himself. Either way, God was standing right there with them. And when we suffer for doing what is right, he's with us too. More than that, God blesses us when we suffer for doing what is right and standing up for him.
That's what our Bible verse for today tells us. Kids, open your Bibles to Matthew 5.10. Blessed are those who suffer for doing what is right. The kingdom of heaven belongs to them. Matthew 5.10. When you suffer for doing what is right and stand up for God, God blesses you. That means he fills your heart with a deep happiness. But that's not all. The greatest blessing from following Jesus and suffering for him is that the kingdom of heaven belongs to you. When you stand up for Jesus, Jesus stands up for you. Someday when you die, if you love and follow Jesus, Jesus will stand up for you and say, he or she is with me. You belong in heaven now. now. The king approached the furnace and called for Shadrach, Meshach, Gak, <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Three friends from Judah kept on standing. They refused to bow down and worship the gold statue. Fortunately for us, we don't get thrown into a fiery furnace for worshiping. What should we go?